Hey there everybody, Don Evans here from WatchReport.com and today I'm going to be talking about the Armand Nicolet JS9. Now I'm going to refer to this watch as a sport diver and some of the reasons for that is you know obviously when you look at it quick it looks like a dive watch and yes it does have a screw down crown and yes it is rated a thousand feet water resistant or 30 ATM but there's a few things that keep it from being a full-fledged diver for me, which I'll talk about more in this video. So up next, take a look at some macro shots of this wrist shot and then the loom shot. But uh, let me give you the specs here real quick. You are looking at a 44 millimeter case, 52 millimeter lug to lug, 13 millimeter stick, 24 millimeter lug width. It of course has a sapphire crystal. And the movement is a base at a 2846 automatic movement, which Armin Nicolay dubs their own. It's the AN2486-9. But as far as I could tell, it's only been modified with a uh, custom rotor and a rotor that you can't see anyway because it has a, a nicely engraved uh, stamped case back. Your price is about $1,700 for this stainless steel version um, on the stainless steel bracelet. Now, there are rubber strap versions, and there are full DLC versions and other dial colors and combinations as well. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look at the Armin Nicolay website, and I'll put the uh, link in the description down below. So go ahead and take a look at uh, my macro and wrist shot and the loom shot, and we'll be back here to discuss this more. So one of the things I wanted to talk about here with the Armin Nicolay JS9 is the fact that it is definitely more of a diver's style watch than a true diver. Yes, it is rated 1,000 feet or 30 ATM. It does have a screw down crown. It does have a unidirectional rotating bezel and everything functions just as it should. But uh, at least to ISO standards and what to most consider to have thing, you know, what you would have on a dive watch, uh, this ceramic bezel insert does not have a loomed pip. It is not a fully indexed bezel, which isn't the biggest thing in the world. A lot of dive watches do not have them, but ISO standards do actually call for them. And one of the other big things is that it does not have a dive watch clasp. It does not have a flip lock safety clasp on it. It does not have a dive extension. You're getting more of a dress style clasp here. It's a dual deployant. It is very nicely done, as is the entire bracelet, which I'll talk about here in a second. 
and it does have like this little flip over catch here um, when you close it. And again, it is very nicely done, but not what I would call a dive clasp. A few things about this bracelet while we're talking about it. The end links on here are fantastic. They lock into place when you have to change it out. Um, almost like a magnet. There's no magnet in there, of course. But uh, unlike some that are very difficult to, you know, you try and get those solid end links back in there, really, you should have no issues when you are trying uh, to uh, put this bracelet back on if you're doing a strap change or whatever. Just really well done, very well machined in there, really well fit. One of the other things is... Um, this does use a single bar and a screw head on the other side. So because of that, you are going to need two screwdrivers. Now, the screws are very sturdy, and the whole system used here is very well done. What I mean by that is they are not chintzy little screw bars. Um, they also, you know, really no issue sizing this at all whatsoever, except for the fact that, yeah, you're, you happen to use two screwdrivers. And, um, you know, you get those tiny little screw heads, so you want to be careful where you are doing it. You don't want to do it over carpet because you're going to probably lose those screws. Um, one other thing, if you could see here, there are half links, one on each side. It did not come like this to me. I had to request these from Armin Nicolay to send me another half link because in the way I had it sized when I took a link or two out, I couldn't get that perfect fit. Um, so when they sent me another half link, I took a full link out, replaced it with a half link to then get what I considered, at least for this style of watch with the dual deployment, to be a better fit on the wrist, not too tight, not too loose. Let me go ahead and wipe off some of my smudge prints now that I've been uh, fondling this whole thing. But try and give you a good look here. There is a look at your crystal. Now, it may look weird here with this bezel, and it may look like you do not have a lot of clearance there to grab onto it. And true, you really don't from the sides here. This is more of a push down on top, and when you do, you really have no problems rotating this at all whatsoever. The crown here has that rubber texture to it, and um, very, very nice crown. Very, It's not... Um, grindy or uh, unsmooth at all. It's very, very nice. Um, and this uh, rubber grip on here is great. It really allows you to grab a hold of that and then screw this back down easily. Um, unlike uh, some of the models from Armin Nicolay, this one does have that nicely engraved case back. Let's see if we can get that into focus here. There we go. Um, tried to give you the look at it already with the macro shots, but there is another look at that uh, pretty cool case back. Um, what's funny is that most of the time I, uh, I bitch a little because you have a um, dive watch and it has an exhibition case back, and I always prefer a solid case back on a, on a true dive watch. <laughs> and this isn't a true dive watch, and yet it has an exhibition case back, so... I, I do find that a little funny. Um, you know, $1,700 and you are getting the ETA 2846. With, you know, it's it's labeled as an AN 2846-9 movement, but uh, that's, I believe it's just a modified uh, movement. They're adding a custom rotor to it and, you know, labeling it uh, as their own. It is not an in-house movement, though. It is a base ETA 2846. You know, I review a lot of watches here. I review a lot of watches at a lot of different price points as well, from, you know, $100, $200, $3,000, $6,000, you, you name it. A lot of people are, you know, they may look at this, and I try and give you the best look here on video that I can and in the pictures on watchreport.com or if you see our photos on social media. A lot of people may look at this and go, oh my God, I can't believe that watch is $1,700. And you are, you know, you are entitled, of course, to your opinion. This is not what I would compare. I would not compare this to your standard micro brand watch. Now, I don't consider this to be a micro brand watch, but what I mean by that is, you know, when you look at a micro brand dive watch for the seven, $800 price point, 
I would not put that in this category because I think it's better made. I think it's a a more solid feeling, a more well finished, and a more uh, polished, if you will, watch. That is, of course, my opinion. Um, you could take away from what you want from this video, and you can decide for yourself. While it is not a true dive watch, I've always said I don't. You know, I believe probably ninety percent of people that are buying dive watches are not actually diving. Uh, with them because ever you know the guys use dive computers this day could this if you put this on say a rubber strap because you wanted to fit it over a wetsuit could you actually go diving with it I'm sure to probably hold up I mean it seems pretty put together uh, to me so I don't think that would really be what I consider to be an issue um, but uh, you know it is a very well-made piece in my opinion and it is definitely a step above um, like I said, that a lot of the micro brands that we may review on here in that six, seven, eight hundred dollar price point is it a thousand dollars better? Hmm. Well, if you look at what you get in that seventeen hundred dollar range, you're just like when you look at what you can get in that seven, eight hundred dollar range, there's always going to be countless options. Is this a well made and well finished watch? Um, does it have a nice aesthetic? I personally think so. If you agree, you can click the link in the description. It'll take you over to the Armin Nicolay website. If you don't agree, that's what these reviews are here for. Leave a like or a comment here on YouTube. Hit that notification bell twice and subscribe to our channel. That way you never miss another review or upload. Follow us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Give it Armin Nicolay a like on Instagram too if you want. This has been a look at the Armin Nicolay JS9 Diver. I'll see you guys on the next video.